Hello and thank you so much for coming by the channel today. I really appreciate it. Today is Sunday, October 1st, but I think I'm going to post this video tomorrow on Monday because I just posted a video yesterday. And I almost always work off the philosophy in life in general that a little of me goes a long way. However, I will warn you, you may see me more in the month of October than ever before because I'm I'm all excited about Victober. I've made progress since my chaotic video of yesterday, but that will be for another video. Today is a September reading wrap up. And what a great month of reading September was. Do I wish I had read more in the month of December? I absolutely wish I had. However, what I read for the most part was excellent. And I'm so excited to share these books with you. And we've talked about a, a couple of these already um, because I've read them in previous previous years, but I've reread them. So, um, and then two that we've already talked about within the last couple of weeks, my first book this month to get me into the spooky season, or of, I should say of September was The Haunting of Hill House, which I gave three stars, three good stars. Just, I'm just uh, not really a ghost story person. They don't do much for me, but I'm so glad I read it because I'm obsessed with Shirley Jackson herself as a person and as a writer. So, and along those lines, we've already talked about this one too. This was a biography from the late 80s, if I recall correctly, called Private Demons, The Life of Shirley Jackson, which I gave four stars. I really, I really quite enjoyed reading that. Okay, so I talked about this book in a recent video when I was recapping my top read since I've been on booktube and this was in my top 10 for the very first year. Uh, it was actually before I was on booktube that I read this in 2019 and that is Anne Youngson's Meet Me at the Museum. And when I did that video I said I want to reread it to see if it was a five star when I read it in 2019 before booktube and I was a lot stingier with my star ratings before booktube. Let me tell you that but that's a whole other story. So I reread this Again, it doesn't take long to read, but oh, you get the feels from this book. So this is an epistolary novel, and we are seeing letters from a woman who lives on an English farm and a curator at a museum in Denmark. So since childhood, our main female character, she's been obsessed with the Tolan Man, so found in the bogs with perfect preservation and is now in a museum in Denmark. And she has always wanted to go there and, and see him in person. And so she starts writing a letter to someone she is hoping is still at this museum. The person she has written that initial letter to has since passed, but she receives a letter from the curator of the museum in response. And a correspondence between these two characters is what this novel is comprised of. And you will go on a relatively short but very deep journey with both of them. And I think it is just beautifully written. I believe this is the author's debut novel. And um, this this is the author. And I love seeing a debut novel from a woman my age or older. <laughs> this always feels very promising. But anyway, if if you are the type of reader who doesn't need some huge plot but just wants to feel the emotion from from more of a, 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 a slice of life, I think you would really enjoy Meet Me at the Museum. Definitely worth a try. So that was five stars again for me. And then my next book was another reread. I told you I was gonna reread this book, my best friend. And we both read it in the month of September as originally planned, and that was The Secret History. So this book knocked my socks off when I read it last year. I just wasn't expecting 
I wasn't expecting to fall in love as much as I did with Donna Tart. I had already read The Little Friend by her. I had yet to read The Goldfinch. So this was my second Donna Tart book, although this is her first one published. And this is Dark Academia. We are following a very close and dysfunctional friend group at a small college in Vermont based on the same college that Shirley Jackson's uh, husband taught at. And, you know, she lived near. But uh, it, it is her, co the real college is Bennington College and uh, Donna Tart went to Bennington College. But Tart makes the college in this book f a fictitious name, but it's basically Bennington College in Vermont. Uh, we start off right away knowing that one of the people in the friend group is dead. So that's the first sentence. I am not giving you a spoiler. I absolutely loved this book when I read it last year. It was my favorite read of 2022. And I will not make it my favorite read of 2023 because this was a reread, a very recent reread, but oh my gosh, I loved it even more. I loved it even more the second time. And I've been thinking like, what's a good analogy metaphor for the experience of reading it the second time? I don't have a great one. I really probably should have put more effort into it, but this is what came to mind at first when I thought, what, how, what can I liken this to? And I liken it to that first time, let's say you're in a really luxurious car. You're, you're on a drive in a luxurious car, but you're going so fast in that car and you're at a place you've never been before. And, and there's just sights everywhere along the way. So you're always looking ahead or looking to the side because you're trying to see what's up ahead. Okay, so I liken that to, I was so involved in the plot the first time. I needed to know how, how, why, all the stuff. Because right from the start, we know Bunny's dead. Okay, but this time, so I'm in this luxurious car. I don't even know what a real world luxurious car is. I don't know, Mercedes, BMW, Range Rover, whatever. <laughs> I don't, um, I drive a Jeep, so. But this time, I know the sights, right? I'm I'm familiar with the speed. I know the sights along the way. So I'm looking, I'm feeling the cushy seat and I'm noticing the nice leather of the car and all the, the fancy um, electronics the car has. Like I'm more in tune with the beauty of the car this time because I already know, I've already seen all the sights. And while I... <laughs> I recognized something special, like something very special in Tart's writing the first time. This second reading just confirmed it. I was so into reading it this time. And yes, I, I have all the I have all the notes and all the underlines. I did not tab because this whole book would have been tab. But it just cements what I have said before, what I said when I was in that speeding car the first read, that her writing is special. It's in its own sphere confirmed it is 100 percent another five star read for me and confirms that tart is just she is a special author the way she writes and the way she she structures her story so uh, if you're wondering what my best friend thought of it she might not be quite as emotive about it or or love it as much as i did but she really really liked it. And I said, well, if you had to rate it out of a five, what would you rate it? And I think at first she said a four and then she said, well, maybe a 4.5. But you have to realize she's not someone who rates, who who thinks that way. She, she reads to enjoy and isn't, you know, all in her mind about what a star rating would be like I am sometimes. So uh, I'm so glad we read it together. So we read the first uh, half and got together over coffee and talked about the book. And then we finished it and got together and talked about the book. She's in Cincinnati, as you can tell, I'm back in Tennessee. But she is now reading Bear Town, which was my favorite read from 2019. And fingers crossed, because I don't know that she loves sad books as much as I do, but Bear Town just gives you everything, doesn't it? But it is sad, but it is awesome. So we'll, we'll see how that shakes out for her. Next, I if she's up for another book of fiction, because she's been reading nonfiction for so long, I would like her to read If We Are Villains. I almost wonder if she will prefer it. 
by ML Rio, you know what I'm talking about? So we'll see. If she asks, I won't force this upon her, but I actually wouldn't mind rereading if we were villains. So, okay, my next book, I want major nostalgic, and it is partly because one of you commented that you were reading um, Matilda. And then um, Sandy at Ms. Reads A Lot on Instagram, she was doing 30 books in 30 days, which is so awesome. I wish I would have done something like that. I needed that for my numbers. But she read James and the Giant Peach. And I thought, you know what? When I was a kid, I would get James and the Giant Peach from the library over and over again. I wish I could remember how old I was, but obviously I loved it, right? I had no recollection of the book other than I had some vision of James being inside the giant peach and it rolling down a hill. So I went to the library and sure enough, they had James and the giant peach and I got it and I really wish I hadn't. I mean, it's not that long of a book, but it felt long and <laughs> it was felt like such a slog to read it. And now, now I've marred my memory of loving James and the Giant Peach. So I am not reading Charlie and the Chocolate Factory because that was another book by him that I read over and over again as a child and absolutely loved. I'm not gonna mess with that memory. Uh, so James and the Giant Peach was a bit of a fail for me. I gave it two stars and that was me being generous. And you have to think, Susan, you're 50 years old. You are not the target audience for this book. So if it works magic in the minds of kids today, then I'm all for it. But my 50 year old mind was like, mm. <laughs> I mean, it was kind of sweet, but also kind of horrible. <laughs> anyway, I ended on two good books. Ugh, the next one I read, Women Talking, because I watched Shelly Swearingen's video, I don't know, a couple weeks ago, a few weeks ago, and she uh, was talking, I guess she had read it a while back, but she was re-mentioning it in a video. And I, I knew it was a movie maybe last year uh, because I remember seeing the commercials, the previews of the movie and thinking I should read that book, but I never did. And for whatever reason, when I heard Shelley talking so glowingly about it and she was referencing other booktubers who love that book, I just went onto the Libby app. It was available. I downloaded the audio and the Kindle and I mostly listened to it. it do you know the story? You probably everyone already knows the the plot of women talking, but it's ba it's fiction, but it's based on horrific true happenings in a Mennonite community in Bolivia. I believe between 2005 and 2009, I believe that was the time period. And what was happening is a group of men within the Mennonite community there, they were drugging girls and women, so from age three to 65, and raping them, um, so drugging them and raping them. And when the women would wake up in the morning and they'd have blood and bruises, the men in the community, you know, oh, you're being punished, you know, you're being punished for your sins, or those were demons who did this to you, or you're being hysterical, you're making things up. So these, eventually someone catches a man or two breaking into these homes and 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 like eight men somewhere somewhere around that number give or take one or two uh confess to doing this it's a whole i i won't go much more into the plot but what the meat of the book is is a meeting these women have there are eight representatives from over a hundred women have been drugged and raped and when i say women i use that term loosely it includes girls over a hundred girls and women have been drugged and raped and a representative of that community, I believe it's eight women, they get together to decide what do we do? We have three options. We do nothing, we stay and fight, or we leave. And so we listen to their discussion through these meeting minutes and the meeting minutes are being taken by a man in the community. And the reason they're being taken care of being written down by a man in the community is this community doesn't allow their girls and women to learn to read and write. So 
it is very upsetting. So, you, you know, I went from reading the secret, secret history, which is horrific. I mean, horrible, horrible, dysfunctional, uh, messed up, horrible. I mean, I loved it, but it's horrible and it's all fake, right? And then I go into women talking and even though it's a work of fiction, it's based on this very real happening and probably more than just this one community has had similar things just as in any community. So, I mean, I I don't want it to sound like, oh, this is a Mennonite thing. No, we know more, right? We know we know better. This these things happen when power is in the hands of a few and instead of amongst everyone. Power and education, etc. Anyway, uh, it was very upsetting, very upsetting, but I am so glad I finally read it. Uh, I do recommend it unless unless you are a sensitive reader and it doesn't go into a lot of detail about the violence these women endured. It is more about them discussing what their options are and them looking forward. So in that way, there is an optimistic overall feeling to this tragedy. And that is a beautiful way to look at something as tragic and awful and sinister as, as what happened. So... I, I highly recommend it. But if you are a sensitive reader, like 20 years ago, I could not have read this book, even though the book itself did not go into great detail. It would have upset me too much. Something happened to me maybe five, 10 years ago, and I became a much, much less secret <laughs> sensitive reader. But so five stars, women talking. Uh, and then finally, I finally finished Upstream by Mary Oliver, which is a collection of her essays. I think it came out 2016-ish. Gotta say, um, so I've read her poetry collection entitled Devotions, and I loved that. I preferred her poetry to her essays, but I also wonder if it was the timing of reading those essays, because really, when I kind of stood back, some of the essays were kind of irritating me. But when I looked back at it, I'm like, Susan, this is totally your kind of thing. What is wrong with you? I think it was after reading The Secret History with this fictitious, uh, you know, dysfunction and then reading Women Talking with this very real dysfunction, Upstream just wasn't what I needed to be reading. It, it's great. I, I I mean, I still forestarred it because I, I know had I read this at another time in another mind frame, I probably would have five started. And, and I do love how she writes. And, and I still was very touched by quite a few things that she wrote in these essays. It just was not the right time for me to read it after reading Secret History and Women Talking. I don't, can you relate to that? I, I I'm guessing you can. We're all readers here. Mary Oliver, like she's she's this poet kind of living in her own her own making, which is awesome. I'm all for that. Uh, believe me, I would love to create a a la la land to be living in. Um, I, I might do so, but I just wasn't in the mood for it after having read those two books. <laughs> so. I feel like that was a disservice to Upstream, but I have had this on my TBR for th like three years and I had read part of it. I'm like, Susan, just finish it. I wasn't like hate reading it or anything because I, like I said, it, it, it's totally normally up my alley and I'm gonna stop going on and on. <laughs> so, um, so that, yeah, that was my reading for the month of September. Let me know in the comments, have you read any of these and what did you think of them? And are you a big rereader? Because you know, three, three of these were rereads, James and the Giant Peach, though I hadn't read it in like 40 years. <laughs> Meet me at the museum and the secret history. So I, that was one of my goals for 2023 with reading was to reread more. And I don't regret any of those rereads except for James and the Giant Peach. Lesson learned. I'm a different reader than I was when I was in single digits of age, go figure. Anyway, we will stop this here. If you have made it this far, thank you so much. If you would, could you do that little like thing? Um, YouTube really likes that. And if you haven't subscribed, subscribe. We're going to be talking some Victober books this month. And like I said, you may see me no more than usual. I will try to pace myself though. I thank you so much for watching and I will see you again very soon. Bye.